What is going on my friends? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to episode 2 billion of building the all drive Civic Type R. So we are just knocking things out of the way with problems with this car. We had the bump steer issue, parts are ordered for that. We had the cooling system issue, that's resolved. Shout out to O'Reilly's for the new thermostat. And now the last main big problem that is going to be a little bit Probably tricky to, to repair is the brake issue. We've bled the brakes on the car maybe four or five times and they're still mushy. They still do not feel good whatsoever. So the current brake system on the car, it has a EM1 master cylinder, which is a 7 8 inch master. Factory FK8 is a one inch. And then all factory calipers and rotors and pads. Braided hard lines, 3AN from the ABS all the way to every single caliper. And they do not feel good whatsoever. So here's what we're gonna do to try and resolve this issue. And I hope it doesn't come down to like the last couple or the last thing, the very last thing that I'm gonna say. So the first thing is I have realized I've been bleeding them wrong. On pretty much every car in the world that I've ever bled, you start at the right rear, hit left rear, and then it goes right front, left front. That's what I've been doing on this car. Now on all data, it says the process is as follows. Quite honestly, the exact opposite. Bleeding sequence. Front drivers, front passenger, rear passenger, rear drivers. So you do that and then you need to apply and release the parking brake five times and then bleed the rear brakes again. Note, when bleeding the brake system air can get trapped inside the rear calipers, this is due to the complex fluid path inside the electric parking brake calipers. Therefore, this procedure is necessary. I'm going to try and power bleed the brakes as well. So what power bleeding is, use this little tool right here. Shout out to one of the subscribers. They sent this over probably over a year ago and I've actually never used it until I saw, well, I still haven't used it, but I saw people commenting that we need to use a power bleeder being that we had the ABS pump off. So what you do is you put fluid in here, you pump this guy up and it applies pressure to the reservoir and then you go around and bleed the brakes. Now, if we go ahead and do that, we power bleed the brakes and nothing is resolved. I did pick up a 98-01 ITR master cylinder. So it's the same size, like overall length, same port location as the EM1 master, but it's a one inch instead of seven eighths. Now, once again, the factory FK8 one is a one inch, and I'm told that that could be an issue as to why these brakes do not feel good. Now, if we put that on and they still do not work like they should, I've seen this comment a couple different times and people are saying that we need hard lines from the ABS pump to all the calipers. Now, of course, I don't wanna do that. Not only are the stainless braided lines on this car pretty expensive to build, like all the line and fitting, it's all pretty expensive, but doing all hard lines while the entire car is together, straight pain in the ass. I'm hoping we don't have to resort to that. I think we should be fine, but worst case scenario, we will have to build hard lines on the car instead of the stainless lines that are on there. With all that being said, let's uh, try to attempt to bleed these brakes again with the proper procedure. Now I have seen this comment a few times as well. We have the Autel scanner and people are saying you need to plug in and bleed. There's the ABS pump like bleed procedure that you can do with the Autel scanner. So I'm gonna try that first before we try to bleed the calipers. Also, minor details, there's a couple little minor details. Creature comforts, I guess I could say. Audio doesn't work on the radio, but it actually didn't work when the car was stock. So I'm not sure if something's going on there with the radio being bad or what. I might take Bobby's radio, put it in here and, and see. It should be under hot functions and brake bleed. All right. This function is not supported on this vehicle. Okay. Well, can't do that. So if I go into the ABS control unit, let's see if there's anything in here. No, that ain't it. Active test, no. Hmm, I don't think uh, we can do that on this car. Moving on from the Autel scanner, let's try and power bleed these suckers. Now being that, of course, no one makes an adapter for our billet reservoir, I had to make my own, so I took a cap, MDP was nice enough to uh, sell me a spare cap so we can do this. Took a cap, drilled and tapped it to accept the fitting for the power bleeder. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna put brake fluid in it, and then this attaches on there. 
And I want to say you pump it up to about 15 to 20 PSI and then we can go ahead and bleed the brakes ourselves. We don't need someone else like we usually do. We're at 20 PSI. I think that's enough. Let's give her hell. I would be using a clear tube, but I ain't got one, so black it is. Okay, caliper one is done. I guess that's how it's done with the uh, power bleeder. Fancy little thing. I'm gonna run through and knock out the rest of them. Just hopped in the car. The brakes already feel way better than they did before. Now it says to apply the parking brake and release it five times. And suddenly our parking brake is not working. I noticed a couple days ago, so it's super weird. First drive with this car, I applied the parking brake on the parking lot and it applied fine. And then I went to disengage it and it would not disengage. So I had to do what I have had to do in the past and pulled the actuators off the rear calipers, put it all back together. And now we have nothing but the brakes do feel way better. So I'm gonna try to diagnose why we have no parking brake. People saying that Honda had some sort of recall on the parking brake switch. So, I'm gonna steal Bobby's. I would say there's a 1% chance that this fixes it, but keep it simple, stupid. Start with the easy stuff first. All right, the car did not have rear ABS sensors in it. I'll show you why here in a second. I plugged them in and set them in the hub. And now I'm clearing all the ABS codes. It was throwing ABS codes for the missing ABS sensors. Yo, we got a light. All right. Ooh, hear that? We made progress. So same thing that happened a couple days ago. Brake pedal down, seat belt on. For some reason this car wants your seat belt on. And I cannot release the parking brake. We'll figure it out. We are knocking problems out of the freaking park today, my friends. It took forever. As soon as with the ABS sensors in, I've been in the car with the Autel, just nonstop, like clearing codes, applying the parking brake, and then it'll be stuck on. And then I think there's probably some actual way to calibrate it, but I think putting them on and then erasing all the codes, turning them off, now they seem to work fine. Or now the parking brake seems to work just fine. So I think we should be good to go. I hope. I'm a little bit nervous. The only time I'm gonna apply the parking brake for the next while is while the car is here at the shop because if I apply the parking brake, say at the gym or something, and it gets stuck on, I'm gonna be really pissed off. But so far, so good. So instead, apply the parking brake and release five times. I just did that. Now we can go ahead and re-bleed the rear calipers. And then I need to fire the car up and see how they feel because of course, as soon as you apply the assistance of the brake booster, it changes everything. So let's, uh re-bleed the readers. Oh yeah, a little bit of air came out, a little more. When you see a bubble coming out with the fluid, that means air's coming out. All right, we should be good. I do need a clear hose just to make life way easier. I don't like brake fluid running on my calipers. See if any air comes out here. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, let's try one more time with the parking brake. Hopefully it stays working. So we're in the car, ignition's on, pull up to apply. This is the only type R apparently in the world you need your seatbelt on to release it. Bobby's car doesn't and the white one didn't. 
Bam. Just like that. Now hopefully the brakes work better. I could vi I could like vis not visually, but actually hear air in the system before. And now I can tell it's definitely not there. I wish I could go drive it, but I need that diff seal. I've already tested the e-brake <sighs> like 20 times, but I'm gonna test it some more. And I'm gonna fire up the car and see how the brakes feel with the booster applied. Okay, so to apply, what do we hit down? Pull up. Okay, that worked. And it did not work. I have concluded something that is kind of unfortunate, but we're gonna have to make it work. It appears that for some reason, the stock ECU has to be plugged in as well. So earlier when I was messing with it, I was trying to figure out and plug everything in. And I still have all the wiring for the stock ECU, thankfully. And just a second ago, I unplugged it, but let's confirm real quick. So it's not applied right now. Pull up, parking brake is applied. Hit the brake. All right, that works. Now let's come up front. Thankfully there's a ton of space everywhere so we could easily tuck the ECU like up there somewhere, which it's not the most ideal thing in the world, but it is what it is. As soon as I unplugged this, I heard a bunch of relays click in the fuse box. Now, seat belt plugged in, brake pedal down. She applies, brake pedal down. Nothing. That is absolutely crazy. I don't think there's a single other thing on this car that the stock engine control management is needed for other than for some odd reason the parking brake and I'm unsure why. But like I said, that is not a super big deal. Plenty of space down there. It's just, it's gotta be done. So I'm thankful I did not cut off that plug. Otherwise we'd be redoing the harness. So it looks like the best by far place for this guy to sit is gonna be hard mounted right to the bottom of our front bumper beam. Nice and up and out of the way. Can't really see it, but the only thing is, of course, we are gonna have to extend the ECU harness, but there's not all that many wires. I would say, what, 20 wires? Yeah. So not a super big deal. I'm glad once again that I haven't lopped this off because there's a lot of similar, like you guys hear it there, three whites right off the bat. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with the rest of this harness and go wire by wire and make sure we just, uh, we do it right. Thinking about it more, if the parking brake needs the stock ECU to operate properly, there's probably other things I haven't even noticed yet that don't work. But for now, let's go ahead and just fire this thing up. And uh, one thing at a time, let's get these brakes finished up. Hmm. I'm gonna go feel Bobby's at Type R. So with the car off, they feel identical, honestly. Hers are definitely uh, more better, for sure. All right. So the brakes definitely are quite a bit better, substantially better than what they were earlier today with bleeding them out properly, but they're still not OEM spec. And being that we have OEM calipers on here and everything, I want them to feel stock. So I think the next thing that is gonna help with this, a one inch bore master cylinder is gonna help this car tremendously. Now, the most important thing and the only way we can use that, which I'm sure it's gonna fit, we need to be able to use the billet reservoir because that plastic one, not only is it way too close to the manifold, but it will also not fit in our firewall cutout. Cross your fingers that it fits and cross your fingers that this actually fixes or helps her brake issue. If this don't fix it, it's gotta be these lines flexing, which I highly, highly doubt, 
but I've seen comments about it, so it could be true. The billet reservoir fits the ITR master perfectly. So let's go ahead and get this installed, get her bled out and see what that does for our braking system. I'm also wondering the effect of different size brake boosters as well. That booster we have on here is for like a EM1 or any sort of older Civic and the FK8 one is a little bit bigger. So I'm not sure if it has any effect or not, but let's give this a shot and see what happens. Car is all back together with the one inch master. All the brakes are bled. E-brake does indeed still work. Of course, with the factory ECU in. I'm pretty sure if I could just figure out what relay this ECU is triggering, we could do something similar to what we did with the starter and just trigger it automatically. But like I said earlier, there's probably other things that the ECU is gonna trigger on the car other than the engine clearly because it triggers the release of the e-brake. Now it's fired up and hopefully it helped a little bit at, at minimum. Oh yeah. It's the next day, so Bobby's car is not here anymore. But if I'm remembering correctly, if Bobby's car is a 10 out of 10 stock type R, very, very nice feeling. And before this was all, all bled with the old master, I would say it's like a seven out of 10. This is either a nine or a 10 out of 10, but I'm not gonna say that until we actually go drive it. So tomorrow's Monday, tomorrow the pinion seal comes in so we can get that installed and go for a drive. In the meantime, we need to get that EC mounted up somewhere on the car. Alrighty, so we got the mounting location for the ECU. She's gonna be right up there. I am going to do what we did with the ABS pump and install the little rubber insulators, just cause I'm worried that maybe some vibration will uh, break some stuff internally. But as I've been doing this, I've been thinking, and I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. Of course, the factory starter circuit on the Type R, it does run through the stock ECU. And earlier when we were not running the stock ECU, I made some wiring adjustments and added in a second starter switch. What I'm possibly hypothetically thinking is that we could start the car with the factory switch now, being that we're gonna be running the stock ECU. So that's the plan, that's the goal. I'm going to make some wiring adjustments on the car, put it back to stock-ish for the starter circuit. And I'm gonna figure out if we can use the stock starter button to power the starter, that'd be sick. Very OEM plus. Well boys, I tried. I really, really, really tried. And this is just too complex for me to compute in my brain on how to make this work. So I've already spent a couple hours on it. It's not worth, it's not that important to me just to have a single switch instead of two. So I'm gonna revert it back to how it was and then we can slap in our def seal and go for a drive and see how these brakes react. Car is all back together, diff pinion seal replaced, 
gear oil is filled. Now this is the first drive with hopefully the fixed cooling system and hopefully even more a fixed braking system. The drive was a great success. I am thinking we're gonna have to do something about this closeness of the manifold and downpipe to the reservoir master. I drove it for about 30 minutes and the reservoir is already at 300 degrees. So I have found a few heat blankets. We could build a heat shield. We could do a lot of things to mitigate that issue. But pretty much all the big issues with the car are fixed. Of course, we do need to repair the trans. I don't even know if I mentioned, but trans has given us a little bit of issues. Not a big deal because it is a stock CRV trans, which we're probably going to scatter anyway. So we have that later on down the road. The car still runs and drives just fine with the current trans. So that is okay. But the next biggest thing is just fixing the bump steer, which, part, which parts are on the way. So that should be fixed here in the next few days. Coolant temps were good the whole time on the drive. Brakes are way better. I'm not going to say they're perfect. We may have to make a few more small adjustments, but I'm pretty sure we're going to be fine running the stainless lines that we do currently have on here which was the biggest thing. I did not want to swap those out because that is just a ton of work that I don't want to do right now. Hope you guys enjoyed. Gonna wrap it up here. Peace out my friends. And I'll see you boys in the next video.